No, he doesn't speak for me on this. He doesn't at all speak. Does that, for me does that bother you when he says he speaks for all? Yeah, Jews? I think it's a rather arrogant statement. Uh, I think the Jewish community is like any other community. There are different points of view. Um, so uh, I, I think uh, that arrogance does not befit Israel, candidly. Ah, speaking of arrogance, has she ever looked inside the White House? Joining us now is Newsmax White House correspondent John Gizzi. And uh, Mr. Gizzi, how are hey. you, sir? I'm doing just great today. If this cold weather would go away, I'd be even better. Yeah, well, we're going to hit 40 today, I believe, or at least in the mid-30s. But anyway, uh, there's a chill emanating from the White House, uh, so I don't think you're going to reach uh, any uh, high temperatures. And that chill is directed at Benjamin Netanyahu. He spoke at AIPAC today. No. He went out of his way to say he respects the president and Obama and the presidency itself. Uh, but uh, we know what's going on here. What's it going to be like tomorrow? In, uh, in inside that chamber? Uh, it's going to look like a campaign rally and Republicans essentially are saying, yes, sir, that's my BB. Uh, <laughs> the fact is that uh, just about every Republican is going to be on the House floor. Uh, Congressman Lee Zeldin of New York, himself a Jew, said that he doesn't know any Republican who won't attend and they will give him a hero's welcome, particularly when he slams at the administration for even attempting to get a treaty with Iran. Now, what no one talks about is whatever the reviews that Netanyahu gets from the Democrats or the White House or in the American press, he needs this appearance on television tomorrow. He's in a desperate situation with the latest Radio Tel Aviv poll showing his Likud party trailing the left-of-center coalition by one percentage point, and the election is only four days away. Now, over overwhelmingly, though, I think by a three-to-one margin, the uh, people of Israel don't trust Barack Obama to have the security and the best interests of Israel at heart. So I, I, I would think and hope that that would play into the, uh, the election, although Obama has people there uh, feverishly working to make sure Netanyahu loses, which nobody talks about at all. Um, these, when these Democrats aren't there, and most of them are going to be from the Congressional Black Caucus, uh, what message does that send to not only the country but to the world? Well, let's not just indict the Congressional Black Caucus, Steve. Uh, four United States senators, four out of 100, Democrats all will not be attending. And uh, I do say, though, that this is a very complicated situation. But again, to quote Congressman Zeldin, decades from now, just as we listen to recordings of Winston Churchill addressing the American Congress in wartime, uh, people will look at Netanyahu and they're going to wonder just about how he spoke in terms of security, in terms of the biggest threat to his country, and what needed to be done. I don't believe they're going to be talking about protocol, Congressman Zeldin told Newsmax. I agree with him on that. Yeah, but, but, but you know, with all due respect, you have to indict the Congressional Black Caucus. I mean, they're not going to be there, and that's more than four out of 100. You know, that's 100% that's, uh, that's of their caucus, and there's a significant number of them, and they're going to make up a, an overwhelming percentage of those who will not be in attendance. So when, when it's the black Congress people who don't show up for the Jewish leader, that, that, that sends an optic to the rest of the world. Well, again, uh, I am certain that the punditocracy is going to focus on this, on exactly what you say, Steve. But I'm going to say, in terms of the larger picture, the focus will be on Netanyahu's message and on Iran and on just what the administration's policy is. I think in the end, the niceties of protocol and sh who showed up and who didn't are going to be lost in the shuffle. And quite frankly, members of Congress are telling me uh, it's being very easy for them to get constituents and staffers to fill the empty seats in the House. Oh, yeah, no, I'm sure that uh, that will be the case. Any any uh, buzz on that report? Uh, and we're going to have the author of that report on in the Israeli uh, press from an Iranian, from a, from a, a Kuwaiti paper that Obama had th threatened to shoot down Israeli jets if Israel launched an attack on Iran. 
No, that hasn't hit official Washington yet, and uh, I'm certain that by tomorrow, when we have the press briefing right after Netanyahu's speech, that's going to be a major topic of discussion there. Gotcha. Uh, but again, there are so many nuances related to the Netanyahu speech and to U.S. relations. We're going to be talking about this for the rest of the week. Absolutely. John Gizzi, always great to see you, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you for wearing the hat as always. When we come back, folks, Jonathan Gilliam will be here, former Navy SEAL and FBI agent, uh, right here. Coming up, we'll talk uh, about uh, the threats that are out there and some of the more horrific attacks we've seen recently. Don't go away.